In the final months of Hitler's Third Reich, at a remote airfield deep inside Nazi Germany, a top secret jet fighter makes its first flight. This is the Horton 229, a Nazi weapon that might have changed the very outcome of the war. The Horton 229 had to be the most exotic piece of machinery in Germany at that time. But was it truly stealth? It has been one of the last great mysteries of the world. In the final months of World War II, Allied forces speed across Germany in a desperate search. Intelligence reports suggest Hitler's Third Reich has a secret weapon that could change the outcome of the war. On April 14, 1945, the U.S. Third Army discovers a top secret facility hidden in the woods 100 miles northeast of Frankfurt. Inside, they find one of Nazi Germany's most advanced weapons, made almost entirely of wood. The soldiers must have been stunned when those doors opened up, and for the first time, they see this aircraft with its unearthly shape, something that no one had ever seen before, a jet engine-powered wooden aircraft. It would have been impossible for them to clearly understand the magnitude or even the importance of what they had discovered. In July 1945, the Horton 229 and other advanced Nazi aircraft are shipped back to the United States under the code name Operation Seahorse. The Batwing fighter is reassembled, but its flying and stealth capabilities are never tested. As members of the Hitler Youth, Reimar and Walter Horton became consumed with the idea of creating an aircraft that flew with the elegant efficiency of birds. In the early 1930s, the self-taught aircraft designers began building and piloting a series of tailless wooden gliders. To meet Goring's requirements, the brothers began modifying their flying wing around a recent innovation, the jet engine. If their concept worked, it promised to leave the Allies defenseless. Walter and Reimer's brother Wolfram was, was killed in the Battle of Britain as Wolfram was laying mines along the French coast in Heinkel 111. Walter was still burned with revenge for losing all his friends in the Battle of Britain, so he wanted to go back to England to attack the British chain home radar network. The Horton 229 was a brainchild of Walter, and it was generations ahead of any other aircraft developed in the world. Of the proposals reviewed by Goring for his new fighter, only one aircraft met his requirements. It was a radical design submitted by two brothers he'd never heard of. The flying wing was a radical concept to everyone, including Goring. And the idea that it was made out of wood just added to his skepticism. Walter so consumed with the passion for this plane that he sort of pulls Goring into the whole idea saying we can do it we can build this from wood with jet engines we can make it fly a thousand kilometers an hour we can give it a thousand kilometer range we can deliver the payloads you need and Goring just said I I'm just astounded by this machine and the shape he says no tail no elevator Walter said it's going to be so maneuverable against allied fighters allied bombers it's going to sweep the skies clean for you so Goring is so taken by Walter's vision that he buys in completely to a flying wing. Goring said, go do this, build it for me and make it fly. The Hortons left the meeting with Goring knowing that they had won the contract to build the three times 1,000 flying machine. And now they felt that they had been vindicated. 64 years earlier, at a secret hangar deep inside Nazi Germany, the Horton 229 was being readied for its first test flight. At the top secret Sonderkommando 9, 
the Horton brothers are overseeing preparations for the first flight of their stealth fighter. By the fall of 1944, work on the 229 is nearly complete when the Hortons receive word that the Fuhrer is now desperate for a long-range bomber. Armour spent three weeks in December of 1944 designing the, the intercontinental bomber known as the Horton 18. It was going to be an expanded version of the Horton 229. As the brothers work in seclusion on Hitler's America bomber, their flying wing fighter is about to make history. December 18th, 1944. Just before dawn, pilot Erwin Ziller watches as the ground crew rolls the Batwing fighter from the hangar. Although a highly experienced test pilot, this will be the first time a jet-powered flying wing has ever been flown. The Horton 229 was generations ahead of any other aircraft developed in the world. And the Horton 229 had to be the most exotic piece of machinery in, in, in Germany at that time. In the frigid winter air, Ziller nudges the throttles forward and begins his takeoff roll. When the 229 flies for the first time, it's vindication and validation for the Hortons. And ironically, the brothers aren't even there to see it. They're busy working round the clock on their design for the America bomber. In January 1945, Walter Horton returns to Berlin to brief Goring on the brothers' design for a long-range bomber, the Horton 18. Walter shows Loring the concept, a bigger version of the 229. 142-foot wingspan, six jet engines. Goring is stunned. In their conversations, Goring was very clear to Walter that he needed this new aircraft because by 1946, Germany would have a functioning nuclear weapon. While the Horton's attention focuses on their flying wing bomber, test flights of the 229 continue. Over the following months, Ziller flew the Horton 229 numerous times, and it performed way beyond the Horton's expectations. In fact, Ziller even flew it in a dogfight against the Messerschmitt ME-262, and it outperformed them in dogfighting ability, maneuverability, and speed. While the flying wing uses the same jet engines as the ME-262, its new propulsion system lacks reliability. On a test flight in February 1945, Ziller's right engine flames out. Unable to regain control, he crashes the crippled fighter into the German countryside. Exactly two months after his first flight, in the 229, test pilot Erwin Ziller is dead. In a remote part of the Mojave Desert sits Northrop Grumman's Tahone test range. Built in the late 1970s, its numerous dishes can precisely measure an aircraft's stealth capabilities. From these inconspicuous hangars, have emerged a stunning array of stealth designs. Security is incredibly tight, and access is granted to a select few. This is the first time cameras have ever been allowed at this desolate test site. These uh, surfaces that we've been working on, we're going to taste uh, electromagnetic radiation pretty soon. It's the first time uh, radars going to be shot at this aircraft, ever. <laughs> okay, stop. And then we'll on to the 